Hello folks, Jason Cressman here, JC's Bees. Remember last week I mentioned our locust flow was about to start? Well, let's see, I released my video on Sunday, but I believe it was Saturday. Uh, we had a small rain blow through and that rain popped the blooms open. The locust flow is now on. The problem is, is Monday and Tuesday we had some cold weather, so there wasn't a whole lot of uh, bees flying. Um, this morning, uh, it's kind of cool, windy. We just had a rainstorm blow through and they're calling for some more showers possibly later today. But it's gonna warm up. Um, this heat's what's gonna generate this afternoon's storm. So that's a good thing. Bees will be able to get out and work these uh, locust blooms. Today what I wanna talk about is small hive beetles. And let me tell you, I started beekeeping in 2009 and it wasn't until last year 2018 that I started to have small hive beetles in some of my hives. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about the small hive beetle today and what I want to start off with is giving you some facts and then after I give you these facts I'm going to give you a few different options to manage them. Adult hive beetles are attracted to hives via the smell coming from them, the pollen, the honey, and the brood and they can fly up to nine miles to find this source. Once they reach or find the hive or the source, they enter and they hide in cracks and crevices, um, under propolis, different areas like that that the bees are able to access. If the bees are able to get to the beetles, they kind of help nudge them out of the hive. But these beetles see they're tricky and they will hide. An adult hive beetle reaches sexual maturity at seven days of age and will mate inside the hive. Female hive beetles can lay up to a thousand eggs in their lifetime. Some studies show up to 2,000 eggs in their lifetime. An adult female can lay 10 to 30 eggs in this capped brood and honey frames, pollen frames, and these cracks or crevices. And then it takes an additional one to six days for the larva to emerge. The larva stage of the beetle is the most destructive stage to them. You see what these larvae will do is they will bore holes through all your comb, through all of your honey frames, through all of your brood frames, and they will eat larvae, they will eat brood, they will eat your honey and your pollen. All of that is a food source to them. And as they go across these frames eating your honey, they're going to release a yeast, a K yeast. And this K yeast, what it does is it makes the honey ferment over a period of time. So if you get a large population of these hive beetles in your hive and they start going through releasing this K yeast, what that's going to do is it's going to make your honey ferment. And that's going to affect the bees. It's going to make them sick. It's going to make them want to leave, maybe abscond or swarm. Um, they want nothing to do with this infestation. After a period of about 6 to 14 days of chewing on your brood and your honey and your all your comb in your hive, the larva is going to try and exit the hive. The goal of the larva is to pupulate in the soil. So it's going to exit the hive, fall out into the dirt, and it's going to bore a hole down into the dirt where it's going to pupulate. Um, it's in the soil anywhere from 2 to 12 weeks depending on the environment and the temperatures and everything. Um, in the summer months, I'm going to assume that it's probably closer to 2 weeks. In the winter, uh, colder periods, it's going to take closer to the 12-week period. So once you see that you have small hive beetles, you want to immediately take action. Today what I want to do is talk about some of the management methods that are very common today to help control hive beetles. First of all, the very best management tip I can give you is to have your hives in direct sunlight. Um, beetles prefer a, a cool, damp environment versus uh, direct heat. So if you put them in the sun, it's going to lower your chances. Another thing you can do is keep your hives strong. Don't be adding boxes um, that you don't have a strong enough population to fill both or all of your boxes. If you have one brood chamber and you're ready to add your second, don't add it until the bottom is at least eight to nine frames full of bees then add your second box. I see a lot of people, they'll have four frames covered with bees in the bottom brood box and they'll say, well, I've already get my second deep on there. 
Well, what that's going to do is it's going to give a place for the beetles to take over before the population of bees is able to get up there and manage that. So keep your colonies strong. Don't put boxes on unless you have a population that can care for that area. Another idea, um, a lot of bee beekeepers do this. Um, I've done it a few times myself. It does work, but it has its flaws. And that is, you buy some Swiffer sheets, make sure you get unscented, and uh, what you wanna do is you wanna cut them in half. This is half of a sheet, and you wanna come to the back side of the Swiffer sheet. And what I do, I found that works really well, is I take a, a, br a fine bristled brush, really soft, and basically you just want to rub it across the back a whole bunch and what that's going to do is it's going to work up these little fluffy hairs on the bottom and uh, you're going to take this and you're going to lay it on top of your frames and your hive um, usually in the corners and what's going to happen is the beetle is going to come up to the top and it's going to walk across this and when it does its legs are going to get caught and all these little fuzzies that you just raised up with this brush um, then next time you make your inspection, you pull this sheet out, you throw it away with the beetles that are caught on it, and you insert another one. Um, like I said, this does work. The problem I see with this is I have seen bees also get their legs caught in here. So for that reason, um, not my biggest fallback to uh, manage beetles, but it does work. The next option you have, remember these? Many of you will, some of you might not. This is a CD case. Now that everything's uh, digital, not too many people have CDs anymore. But what you wanna do is you wanna get one of these uh, slim, they're a little bit thinner, uh, jewel cases. And you wanna take and bust out this area right here. And what that area is, is the part that lines up with the circle at the top and the bottom. You'll notice if I turn the case this way, those cracks where I busted out the plastic on the end are right above and below that area. So you want to open it up, take your pair of pliers, and break that out. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take and put you a little bit of uh, honey, maybe some pollen, right here in the middle, and you're going to close it back up. What that's going to do is it's going to attract beetles to the inside of here because they can get in there and the bees can't get to them they feel safe um, they got everything they need in there to eat and then you just take this out next time you make an inspection dump it into your bucket of uh, whatever it may be uh, soapy water maybe to kill them off and add a little bit more honey and pollen and you lay it back in the hive so yes you would need one of these for each hive or maybe two put one in each brood rocks so there's a couple really good suggestions but just recently um, I had a Facebook friend of mine who makes something called the beetle blocker um, in Australia he sent me one of his products to try and I want to give you a quick overlook of that and how it works so we'll move up to my hive now that has that installed and I'll show you what that looks like okay so here is your next option there is now um, baseboards on the market like this one here, which is called the Beetle Buster from Australia. Um, when the beetles enter, this is a way of blocking them and helping to manage them. Now, I don't know all of the details, but I believe the way this works, if we go in here a little closer, you're going to notice um, a little metal edge going across the bottom here. And that goes back and then comes up and then comes back towards us. I don't believe that a beetle can climb up and back out this way and hang upside down and then go up and around that ledge. So it kind of blocks the beetle from even entering. Um, another thing about this beetle board is in the bottom of it there is holes. And I'm going to show you some pictures here. And the way these holes work is after the larva hits the bottom and tries to exit to find dirt, they fall through these holes, which then they fall out onto this tray. Which is covered with uh, this white stuff you see is diatomaceous earth. Um, 
it kills the beetles. Doesn't harm the bees, but it kills the beetles. So I don't see any beetles here right off because since I've added this, the problem has completely resolved itself. But it was the first couple days and I think I've got some older video here all overlap. All right, there's uh, some beetle larva right there. Uh, there's a cluster of them there. We got one here. So a lot more than I figured there was now that I have a way to actually monitor the situation. So they do seem to be dead. They're not moving by any means. Um, take this one here. No movement. Um, you could see them trying to move around in this stuff and then you come back a little bit later and they'd be dead. So this is very, very effective at uh, controlling the population. You know, if you can control them not making it back to the soil, um, their livelihood is shortly ended after that. So, as you can see, I've got plenty of bare dirt here underneath of them for them to drop into. But what I did was I took some of that diatomaceous earth and I sprinkled it underneath the hives here onto the soil so that anything that does make it into the soil will still have contact with the DE, hopefully killing them off. So, just a couple weeks ago when I realized, you know, hey, I've still got a small hive beetle problem this year, um, I thought last year I had taken care of it, but it seemed to be that I did not. Um, I pulled out a, hive, a frame out of this hive, and it was just loaded with larva. I want to show you what that looked like so you can see. Um, it almost looks like it's just covered in maggots, and you can see how they're destroying the comb. Now, this is one thing good about having chickens. Um, I was able to take that frame out, set it on the ground. The chickens ate every single larva. Um, and that was a way for me to help keeping them from getting into the soil and cutting their life short. So that worked out rather well. Um, I also took that frame after the chickens were done. The far side still had decent comb and uh, I took it and stuck it in the freezer for 24 hours and then gave it back to the hive. So being in the freezer, anything that was in the comb was killed and now the bees are able to uh, draw the comb again on the other side and uh, reuse the frame. But you can see how quick these things can just infest a hive. So my best advice to you is keep your hive strong. Um, that is the best option and keep them in direct sunlight. If you're looking for cheap options to control these pests, look towards the Swiffer sheets. Look towards investing in some of these uh, CD jewel cases. Um, you know, another thing that somebody just recently told me, and I don't know how true this is, but maybe some of my uh, followers can vouch for this. Hive beetles, I was told, cannot hover. So if you get rid of the bottom entrance altogether, go to the top of the hive, and then what you want to do is you want to get you a PVC elbow. And you want to screw that into a hole in your hive and make that your entrance. And you want the elbow to point down. The reason I was told this works is I was told hive beetles cannot hover like honeybees. So if the elbow is pointing down, you know, a bee would come in and it would hover until it got lined up and then it would go up and in. As where the hive beetle cannot hover, so it's not able to get into the hive, therefore you have no infestation, you have no uh, hive beetle larva, you just don't have hive beetles. So. This might be an idea to play around with if this is the case. But like I say, I don't know for sure whether hive beetles can hover or not because they're kind of new to me. You know, when I started in 2009, Varroa mites were a big thing. Um, I learned about them right off the bat. The first three years, I started completely over because I failed to uh, keep up my management practices on the Varroa mite. But since that third year, I've learned a lot and Varroa mites are now under control. Now, here comes a whole new pest, hive beetles. So I'm just starting to learn all these different ways to manage the beetle, and uh, I'm gonna share them with you here today. Um, what I'd like to do real quick before I send off and tell everybody goodbye is I'd like to walk up here. The neighbor um, has a couple 
uh, locust trees right up here by my top driveway and I'd like to just give you a quick look at them beautiful blooms. Okay, so we'll walk up this way. And there's my uh, bird bath, which I also use for the bees to get water. You can see I got rocks in there for the bees to land on. Well, there wouldn't be. Any more bees? I don't see any more bees. Anyway, that's how the bees get their water here at, at my house. I got a couple of little tiny locust trees right here. Man, I'll tell you, if you've ever, if you ever have the chance to grab these petals like this and smell them, oh my goodness, they smell so good. But look here. These trees right here of my neighbors are just completely loaded down. All bloomed out. Can't beat it. You can't beat it. And we look over here at the other neighbor. These are uh, wild cherry trees and they are still in bloom. Um, I don't have any blackberries or raspberries up here, but they have officially opened too. So very excited about that. Um, so hey folks, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if so, you'll give me a big thumbs up and then I'll help boost it in the YouTube search ranks and make it easier for other beekeepers to find. If you haven't subscribed, please take time to do so and make sure you click on that little bell so that you get notified when I release new videos. Thanks for watching JC's Bees and we'll see you next Sunday at 7 a.m. Be there.